we are showing in today's video is how to make fake chenille. This is a, um, a sample that we have in the store to show how chenilling works and what it looks like. This is a panel. It's that really fluffed up stuff. But when you do it with a panel, everything lines up and so you get that really sort of soft 3D effect but you still keep the look of the panel. So this is another great option for, oh, the panel's really cute, but I don't know what to do with it. Because even though you sliced it up, look, you can still totally see what the panel is. Here's another cool thing about making a chenille quilt. One, you layer four pieces of fabric, you sew them together, you cut them apart, you bind it, done. There's no batting. You can put batting in it if you want to. Um, but if you put batting in it, then you need to only cut through two layers and I'll show you that too. It's four layers of fabric. There's three copies of the panel and one yard of backing fabric. And then I used pre-made binding. So this was literally the easiest quilt ever. The first thing you're gonna do, I like to use a choco liner, which looks like this, for a couple of reasons. Because it goes on really smooth and pretty much as you sew on it, it bounces off. So you don't really have to get rid of it anywhere. That being said, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna show you a different way right now because this is white fabric, so it wouldn't show up really well, but this comes in like four different colors. The first thing that's really important about doing the chenilling technique is you have to sew on the bias. So what I'm gonna do is take my ruler, find my 45 degree line, which is right here. So my 45 is lined up with the straight cut on my fabric, all right? And then I'm gonna make a mark. This is a friction pen, so it's anything that's still showing up is gonna come off. I am only gonna chenille through the circle on this one. I'm gonna leave the rest unstitched. So I can mark it all the way across if I want to, just to give me some reference points, but I don't really have to. Then for this particular technique, I'm gonna mark three quarter inch lines. Now, here's a hot tip. If you've got a walking foot, you can set your three quarter inch seam guide on your walking foot and only mark the first line. So here's my first tip. You need to mark, you need to find your 45 and then you need to mark your lines all on the diagonal, all right? You can't straight do this. I'm just gonna sew right on the line. I'm gonna show you on a different piece of fabric. What I did was I took, these are all peppered cottons. These are four different colors of peppered cottons. I took the pink one by itself and I marked with my chalk pen one inch lines on the diagonal all the way across this fat quarter. There's no reason to stack up all four pieces of fabric if you're just gonna mark the line because then you gotta keep them all straight. Just mark your diagonal one inch lines all the way across your fat quarter, then pin it together. Then you don't have to worry about your pins rocking. You wanna sew one direction and then turn around and go the other way. Because if you sew all the same direction, your fabric's gonna bow. we sew all these lines is we have this handy dandy cutter. This thing is so awesome. There are other cutters out there but this is the one that I like for many reasons. One, it will cut four different size chenilles. So you have a small, medium, large, extra large. And what makes it different is see the, the little guide right here? That's what slides between the fabric. So depending on how little or how much chenilling you want, you sew different thicknesses in between here, okay? The pattern gives you all of those instructions and the packaging for the cutter gives you all those instructions. So I made this an inch apart because I planned on using the bigger cutter. 
Um, the other thing I really like about this is it takes a 60 millimeter rotary blade and the other cutter I had before this had a rotary blade in it, but it would just cut for a little while and then it would get dull and you'd have to change the whole blade. This one, depending on where you're cutting, and I'm going to cut on the large one, the blade is up underneath there. You'd have to try really hard to cut yourself with it. You can, sh you can take this dial, here's your zero, and you keep turning the notch, you get a fresh part of your blade. So. Now what I've done is I have sewn together four layers of peppered cotton. We're gonna take that wide piece and we're gonna cut through the top two layers. If you're using this as a quilt top, you're gonna to cut through the top two like this. You're gonna take that little guide and you're gonna put it through the top two layers. It takes a second to get it started a little bit because you need some kind of traction. Okay, once you get it started, it just rips through both of those layers. Okay, now since I used the wide, that, that side was the medium one, here's the wide side, and it will just slide through there. So once you get it started, once you make it do what you want it to do, it slides through with absolutely no effort. What I'm gonna do is take this, and I'm gonna cut pieces out of it, you want to make an entire chenille quilt, you can patchwork or you can chenille a whole bunch of fat borders and all different colors. And then you can just cut your squares out of this because now it's all pieced together and you've got this really cool sort of pre-quilted fabric. You, if you can sew a straight line and it doesn't even have to be that straight of a line, then you can make a really soft, fuzzy rag quilt with no batting. the fuzzy happens in the washing machine. So you take it home, you throw it in the washing machine, you throw it in the dryer, and make sure that you change your lint filter like three times before this is dry. Because you will have enough lint to make like every bird in the county a nest. So, you know, you don't wanna pre-wash. I mean, you can pre-wash your fabric if you want to, if, you don't, if you're worried about shrinkage, but you wanna wash it after you, sh after you chenille it. Okay, so same thing with flannel. You could do it with flannel and it would be extra cozy, especially since you're not putting batting in it. That gives it the extra fluffiness. Uh, that's what I have for you. If you guys have questions, don't, uh, don't hesitate to send me a Facebook message and we will try to get you hooked up. Okay, I hope everybody's having a really good day. We will see you later.